Okay, can everyone see this? Yep. Okay, great. So my talk is on getting paid, freelance web development, aka how to hustle and grind. So a little introduction. Um, I previously started a small business, which is still around. So I have a kind of an insider perspective when you want to deal or how to deal with small businesses. Um, currently, I'm working on building some startup and doing some freelance work so I can get paid. Um, and I was a panelist for the Mobile Development Day conference where I spoke about uh, entrepreneurship. So uh, here's a roadmap for this talk. First, I'm going to talk about mindsets and then channels and then sales. Okay, so uh, first I will say that freelancing is, is not for everyone. So your success will pretty much be determined by your ability to hustle and grind. So I define hustling as being comfortable doing unfamiliar things, which is what you're going to be doing all the time. And then grinding as being comfortable doing repetitive activities to the point of monotony. So that's what I consider discipline. So part one, mindsets. So the first thing you have to do is um, you have to stop thinking like a web developer. You have to start thinking like a small business owner. And that means um, just toss away all the jargon. Um, there's no point when you're selling to small businesses to be talking about the technicalities of it, um, to be talking about Ruby, you know, all these different things that you can do as a hacker. Um, just throw that out of the window. You want to put yourself in the shoes of a small business owner. And so what that means is don't think when you're pricing your work, don't talk about it in terms of um, how many hours it's going to take you to do it. And then, you know, based off of a, based off of your costs, you want to think about when you're doing these kinds of projects in terms of what value or um, what value you can provide to the small business owner. And so um, you want to be talking about in terms of their bottom line. So it's not about building a website. It's about, improving sales and helping them grow their business. Okay, so as an example, so uh, I live in Champaign, which is a small micro urban town. And so a small business here makes about 20 to 50K in monthly gross revenue. So that's before costs. So if you can improve their business by 4%, so if just taking an average of 30K, uh, that means that on a monthly basis, they'll be making about $1,200 more um, in, in a single month. So you can kind of do the math from there. So um, you can really help grow a small business's um, revenue. So why did I use 4%? Well, it's a really, really arbitrary number and it's a really, really low floor. So actually, I believe that if you can do your job correctly, you can really, really improve the business past that. So here's some examples, um, just some stats that I pulled off the internet. So 75% of consumers choose a restaurant based on search results, and actually 65% of consumers will not go to a restaurant that does not have their menu online. So uh, customer relationship management is um, basically tools that allow small businesses to keep track of their clients, progress and work. And a lot of small businesses don't have that because small business owners are not very tech savvy. So if you can implement a CRM system for them, um, either building one through, you know, rails, a rails gym or kind of plugging in Salesforce or something like that, you can really improve their productivity by 30%. Um, and AdWords. So AdWords is, um, so for instance, my business, we fixed phones. So plugging in AdWords through Google, um, we actually saw a 3x return on investment each month. So that meant when we put in $500 for AdWords, we saw about $1,500 in increased profits. So um, again, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do to help small businesses that are just not very um, fluent about the internet. So that means increased money. So you can add a lot of value given the skill sets that you already have. So part two, uh, channels. So you want to experiment with new and different things and look where no one else is looking. So an example of that is Angie's List. There's a lot of businesses that are just on Angie's List, which is kind of like a paid Yelp, where the only people that can see it are people that are already um, paying. So these businesses, there's some businesses that get all their business from Angie's List, which is crazy because they don't have a public site. So improving, so giving them a site, you can really help their revenue, maybe to exit within like a three month period. Phone book, um, there's yellow pages um, that businesses pay like a couple thousand dollars for. Uh, yes, there are people that still, still use the yellow book. 
go look through there, find businesses and call them up and kind of do some sales from there. Um, join your local chamber of commerce. Um, and also you can look into kind of domain specific uh, conferences where it's a bunch of insiders in a specific industry and kind of network and talk with them. Um, those are more warm introductions, which will help you out a lot. Okay, so question, how can you leverage technology to improve your client's revenue? There's a lot of ways, so improve sales. This is easy, you know, building a website, marketing, drive traffic. But you can also optimize efficiency by automating tasks. An example of that is a CRM system, but there's others depending on, you know, the small business. You can reduce costs by cutting out the middleman. So for instance, if a, biz, if a restaurant currently uses Grubhub, Grubhub takes 15%. If you can build an online ordering system for them, that just increased their revenue by 15%. Okay, scaling. Uh, this can be helping them with hiring uh, or converting their current business to digital. And so one of the key things you wanna be thinking about is what are their current goals? So some people wanna improve sales, some people cannot hire enough people, and that means you wanna be trying to get their business online, putting AdWords up, um, putting them on you know, all the different kind of hiring platforms. So um, there's two kinds of businesses. There's impulse businesses and destination businesses. So an impulse business is like a restaurant. Someone walks by it and they go in. Destination businesses are like service types things. Uh, your plumbing breaks, you go online and you look for plumbing. So you wanna target destination businesses because building an online site, those are the ones that people will be going towards. So part three is sales. Uh, so warm introduction versus cold calling. Uh, so how do you get warm intros? Uh, well, a pretty much a very easy example is to be a customer. People are more willing to talk to you if you're a customer of them. So uh, you're getting your haircut, talk to your, you know, talk to the people in the salon. Um, leverage past clients. You want to build relationship with the people that you worked with and ask them and to get referrals. Uh, again, attain, attend domain specific events and just be outgoing. Cold calling. Okay, so uh, if you're doing cold calling, First thing you want to do is research. Research the business. Um, figure out th what if they have a current website. Figure out what other websites are. You know what other competitors have websites, and uh, kind of go from there. And always, before you go into a meeting, have suggestions about how you can improve their current site if they already have one. So you're kind of more already in the loop. Uh, be confident. Um, as a small business owner, when people came in to talk to us, um, if they weren't confident, you kind of just dismiss them. You hand them off to one of your employees and you just say the manager is not here. Um, you want to be listening. Uh, a lot of times when people are begin selling things um, as a beginner, you're always talking about what you can offer, what you can offer. 50% of the time you need to be listening to what they want and being able to mold what, you're, what you can offer to them in terms of what they want. Um, and then you can also just kind of learn basic sales. This is things like tonality, rhythm, and language patterns. Okay, so grind, grind, grind. So you wanna be persistent when you're talking to these people. Um, the sale begins when the customer says no. So that's one of my favorite quotes about sales. Um, you wanna be following up with all these people. Um, and what I mean by that is when you send out your first email, they might not respond. And that's just be, be, that could just mainly be because that small business owners are really, really busy. So you wanna follow up two, three times before you really wanna consider giving up. And so you wanna also direct communications. And what I mean by that is um, instead of handing out business cards and hoping for people to call you, that's not gonna happen. You wanna get business cards, you wanna keep the ball in your court, and you wanna be um, you know, putting the burden on yourself. Okay, so again, build relationships. That's most important. Um, small business owners are not, a lot of them don't really care about the technicalities of it. It's not logical. It's based on, can they trust you? And are you a reasonable person that they can work, work with? And also, don't get lost in the details. You wanna sell them on the big vision. How the services you can provide can make their life a lot easier and help them grow their business and uh, you know, be a trustworthy person. And that's the lightning talk. Thanks for watching, guys. Super good, John. I feel like everybody has a bunch of questions. Uh, does anybody have any questions for John? When you went out and started getting your, what did you do to get your first, like, say, handful of clients? Did you go at a very low rate to try and attract them or give the service away for free just to build a portfolio and a name? Yeah, so um, I was kind of fortunate in that I already had a small business that was kind of tech related. So we had a lot of 
people incoming traffic, even though we didn't really do any advertising. But um, you can just walk around to local businesses um, and offer to do some work for them. Um, you know, sometimes you might want, yeah, lower costs are very important, um, especially when you're starting out. But as you kind of just develop, you're just going to get more and more referrals coming in. Um, but yeah, there's just, again, kind of all the different ways I listed before are really good things to start off with. Yeah, I've noticed that there's there's basically in my area there's one there's one major web design company and they've recently landed like some pretty huge clients that have basically made their company twenty times more profitable than they were just a couple of years ago. Yeah. So now all the companies that they had started with all the small businesses that they started with have all really antiquated websites. Um and they're just not mobile responsive and, and stuff like that. So what I've been doing is uh, I've been searching for copyright, the, the design company, and then just look for the ones that aren't mobile responsive. And then I'll go in and talk to them and say, hey, you know, you're getting hit with these, you know, Google search results because now Google search results, if it's not mobile responsive, they knock you down a couple pegs. So you're spending money on AdWords, but now you're getting knocked down a couple pegs because you don't have a mobile site. And I think that's a great approach to finding new companies. Yeah, definitely. Um, what I've noticed, I've talked to some of the design firms around me, and a lot of them are backed up by work. So, um, you know, kind of just, I'm guessing that they have so much work that they're just going for enterprise clients. And I think there's a really big market out there right now for freelance web work, which, um, you know, if you're doing a startup, whatever, it's a really good way to uh, kind of get some cash coming in. Now, do you do um, web design or web hosting too, or do you do like a recurring subscription fee, for instance, sometimes some of the web design firms? I mean, what's the best approach for just starting out? Do you just do the... Yeah, so um, that really all depends on the client, um, and it kind of depends on how you want to spin it. So, um, you know, a lot of small businesses, you know, three, four thousand dollars up front is not something that they're willing to pay for. So you want to get a payment schedule going, maybe like three hundred dollars a month or something like that. And you always want to be following up with them and trying to uh, do more work for them because you want to pretty much try to be like their tech person, like be their CTO. Right. John, do you have a website for like a, this particular, like the freelance type stuff, or do you just use this normal website that you have for your other business? Um, I don't have a website. Um, that's kind of in the works right now. Um, but I, I've never gotten around to it just because, you know, I've been busy building other things. Um, and it hasn't really been a problem. I think that, um, especially with the kind of clients that you want to t be targeting are kind of the ones that don't have websites currently. And those are the people that might not be going online to be searching for people that can build them a website. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty fascinating because I feel like a lot of people like starting out are like, oh, but I need to get my website perfect right. before I get a sale. Meanwhile, you're up here being like, I don't even have a website, but I know how to get all these sales. And it's like, maybe you should just start hustling and grinding the way that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's spot on. It's like, like you can either spend another 10 hours behind your computer making sure that it looks perfect on the last mobile screen that you can find, or you could go do three meetups and already have five businesses in the pocket. Um, in the same amount of time. So it's all about the, the hustle going out and being where it's uncomfortable. So if you feel comfortable building a simple website, like a one pager with maybe even a theme and making it responsive where it's already baked in and hosting it on GitHub pages, then it's time to like flip it around and be where you're not comfortable with it, standing and talking to a small business owner and being like, yeah. hey, I can make your website. And that will feel really awkward, but you need to learn how to do that too. And if you don't have like a passion project where you're using to grow your skill set, like this is a really great way to get a passion project and get paid at the same time to learn. Um, and that's what I've kind of been doing over the past couple months. And it's working out pretty well. So have you, like what types of uh, uh, the businesses or like uh, what type of projects have you found most lucrative? Because you kind of uh, touched on a few different ones. You talked about like the CRM type stuff, automating processes they had. I, the Grubhub one was something that's really interesting. I'm not sure if that was actually an example that you actually had or if it was just something that you just kind of came up with. Like what do you think is the, the sweet spot or is it just like just listen and do whatever? Well, um, you definitely want to go for clients where um, they have a high return on investment 
on a client basis. So for instance, a restaurant has low margins. So even if you can bring them 50 more client, you know, 50 more customers, that's like maybe like $3 per customer. On the other hand, if you're going for like, you know, contract, uh, like people that have con like construction, um, you know, painting companies, plumbing, they're going to get more return per customer, which means that you can help them out a lot more. Hmm. So ba basically go more to the more traditional, like you go, the better. It's like restaurants is like all over the place. But if you go yeah. to like, I can also answer like a plumber or something like that will not have a responsive website that actually, it makes it easy for people to call them and, and, and yeah. figure everything out. And, and, and it's not just that, like, um, I, I think that like plumbing and those kinds of things that, um, that like those industries in like a small town or whatever, or a medium sized town in general, their websites are going to be pretty bad. So if you can just um, build them a website, um, it's going to help their business a lot more, especially because when you're, something breaks, you're going online and you're searching for help on plumbing and no yeah. one has a website. Totally. You're probably not going to pull out the yellow phone book or I don't even own one. So last question for me, do you do all the design and stuff like that yourself? Or do you buy like pre-made teams and just kind of like uh, kind of sell somebody else's work, but like you're giving the service of actually knowing where to go and like how to package it together and how to host it and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, that's a, that's another approach you can take. Um, I did do the designs myself because um, I also kind of view it as a learning process to design things. So I'm kind of getting paid to learn to design. So I might as well as do it. Um, and it makes you more flexible because somebody might want something specific, something changed up and you can kind of do all of that yourself. Cool. Um, yeah. Oh, the only thing that I kind of outsource is um, copywriting. I think having a website with good copywriting is very important. So um, you can find someone on Reddit to, to kind of do that. Um, also, I think what makes a website really good is having good pictures. Um, it's very easy to find photographers and it'll just, you know, bring your website to the next level.